At its core, Puccini's Tosca is an opera about love, betrayal, lust, and murder. But most importantly, it's about Tosca, a fiery soprano that has captivated the hearts and minds of men. But what is it about this opera that has captivated the clarinet community? I sit here with my buffet Tosca clarinet, playing on a Plainic Puccini Tosca mouthpiece, and I have to wonder what's in a name. If I recall correctly, Shakespeare once mused through his character Juliet, what's in a name? That which we call a Tosca would sound as sweet by any other name. Or maybe he was talking about something else. Uh, who really knows? I mean, but seriously, what is it? What has captivated these makers? Is it just the third act clarinet solo? I mean, truly a wonderful solo. One of the best clarinet solos in the whole opera canon. Or is it something more? Are they hoping that their instrument, their mouthpiece, truly captures the energy, the spirit of the fiery soprano, soprano Tosca? I'm not sure, but I want to find out. So, welcome to my Plainic Puccini Tosca mouthpiece review. Now, some of you might recognize this mouthpiece from my review of its brother, the Plainic Nomos B2. I talk about it briefly in that review, but just a quick recap. To quickly summarize the obvious external differences, the Tosca has thicker rails, a larger tip opening, and a physically larger tip size than its brother, the Nomos B2. I'm not going to lie, I definitely feel the more open tip and larger physical size when trying out the Tosca, both in comparison to the Nomos B2 and other mouthpieces like a standard BD5. This is not meant as a critique, merely as an observation. But I do think people already used to playing something like the B40 or maybe even B40 Lyre would feel at home faster with this mouthpiece than people using other mouthpieces. In general, I'm used to mouthpieces with smaller tip openings and probably smaller tip sizes. So this one took me a little bit longer to get used to and truth be told, I'm still kind of getting used to the feel of this mouthpiece. I would not say I'm 100% secure on it yet, but I'm getting very, very close. That being said, the sound I immediately got out of this mouthpiece, I mean, right from the first note, not used to the mouthpiece at all, was really fantastic. It's the kind of sound that makes the instrument addicting to play. You just can't get enough of it. The sound is large, round, and warm, and hopefully you got a sense of that in the Tosca excerpt I played earlier in the video. The articulation on the mouthpiece is also excellent. Here's a little bit of both some single and double tonguing, just so you can kind of get a sense of how the mouthpiece really articulates. articulation on this mouthpiece is also excellent. It's very responsive, very immediate, and very easy. I did not feel myself getting tongue-tied while using this mouthpiece. I also didn't have any problem double-tonguing on this mouthpiece. In fact, this is one of the easier mouthpieces I found personally to double-tongue on. Also, here's a quick intonation test.
As you can hear, the intonation is pretty rock solid. It's hard to get much better than that. This for me was a very marked improvement over the old Play Easy B2, which had notorious intonation problems. You're not gonna find the same problems here. One thing that I've noticed in general as I do these Play Nick mouthpiece reviews is that the facings aren't always symmetrical. This isn't that big a deal for me. As long as a mouthpiece plays well, I'm not generally too bothered by how it looks, but it does make me think that you're going to have um, some marked differences from copy to copy. One may play better or worse for you, so it might be a good idea to order more than one copy. That being said, I only got one copy for this review and it played great. In fact, it played so well that I bought it on the spot, which when going into this review, I had no intention of doing. All right, so hopefully earlier my excerpts did this mouthpiece justice. I think the sound is, like I said, big, round, warm, has good articulation, good intonation. There's a lot of things going for it. I personally feel that it's playing its best when you take the approach of just relaxing your embouchure and blow. That's not to say that you don't need to engage your embouchure or use, you know, core support or any of the fundamental things of playing the instrument. But I don't think it's a mouthpiece that benefits from you muscling it. In fact, I think it's designed with the opposite in mind. It's supposed to make it as easy as possible, I think, to get a good sound out of the instrument. Now, I think a big question that a lot of people have when we're talking about a mouthpiece that's known for being a little more covered, a little darker, a little warmer in sound, is how does it project? Well, to me, it seems that this mouthpiece would project fine in pretty much any scenario. Like its brother, the Nomos B2, it's certainly geared more towards blending than soaring out over an orchestra or a band section, but I still think there's enough color in the sound that it could do so admirably if needed. While I think the breadth of sound is large and capable of projecting, those who like the maximum amount of ring, ping, etc. in their sound aren't going to find it here. If you're trying to choose between this and the Nomos B2, unless you're specifically interested in playing on plastic reeds, the Puccini Tosca would be my pick every time. If you do plan on playing on plastic reeds, however, I would elect for the Nomos B2. While the Tosca works reasonably well with plastic, the Nomos B2 was designed with plastic in mind and for me simply worked better. In general, I think this mouthpiece is an excellent alternative to the Van Dorn B40, perhaps B40 Lyre or BD5. Anyone who regularly plays on those mouthpieces would probably feel at home pretty quickly on something like this. It's certainly trying to capture the same style of sound. If anyone is wondering what kind of reeds I would recommend to pair with this, in Nick Kuchmeyer's video discussing his own products, I think he recommended a 3.5 V12 as sort of like a place to start. For me, that was a little bit too hard. I could make it work, but I didn't quite get the clarity and the sound that I wanted. I bumped it down to a 3 V12 and had much better success. I also had some good success with 3.5 56 Rula Peaks. I thought those paired really nicely with this mouthpiece as well. I think in general, you probably can't go wrong between strength three to 3.5. I generally like just in general on any mouthpiece, I'm usually on the lighter side of things. But if you find yourself on the harder side of things with most mouthpieces, you'll probably be happier with the 3.5. Real quick, I'd like to give a big shout out to Silver Sign Works for sending this mouthpiece to me for the sole purposes of doing this review. Even though I ended up buying it in the end, I still appreciate the fact that you were willing to send it to me just for this review. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions about this mouthpiece or anything else you heard in the video, please feel free to ask. If while you're here, you could go ahead and like, subscribe, maybe leave me a comment down below. It would be really appreciated. It really helps get this channel out into the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, happy practicing.